At each school board meeting staff, members make presentations that highlight academic programs in the York County School Division. In October 2010, York High School staff spoke to the board about using Google Earth in the classroom. Tonight's presentation is entitled Using Google Earth in the World Language Class. And it, the presenters are from York High School. And they're going to share information about how the high school has embraced the use of Google Earth technology as a tool for enriching the foreign language curriculum. Spanish teacher Lori Martin works in partnership with educational technology facilitator Karen Askin to provide students with a virtual passport to Spanish-speaking countries. And it's built around what's traditionally referred to as a web quest, and students not only use Google Earth, but they apply their Spanish language skills, geographic knowledge, and cultural understanding. So I'd like to uh, welcome Antonio Fox, principal, Lori Martin, Spanish teacher, and Karen Askin, educational technology facilitator, to share some information with you uh, regarding their work in this area. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. Um, we're going to take you on a little journey tonight, do some traveling with you. Um, and I'm fortunate to have a lot of York High staff, our assistant principals, Ms. Lisa Searcy and Mr. Anthony Vladu with us this evening as well. But I'm going to let these two awesome ladies share a little journey with you um, and take you on a trip with Google Earth. So I hope you enjoy your travels. Good evening. My name is Lori Martin, and I'm a Spanish teacher at York High School. I currently teach Spanish levels three and level four, and my level three students are actually getting ready to start a chapter where the students will be studying the differences between living in the city versus living in the country. And a couple of years ago, Ms. Askin, Ms. Monica Rodriguez, and I both all came up with a Google Earth tour for the students. During, throughout the chapter, the students are supposed to uh, look at advantages and disadvantages of living in different areas. They look at um, cultural opportunities, educational opportunities, places of interest. So what we did was we constructed a web quest that says to build or not to build, that is the question. And the students act as real estate agents for Falcon Elite Incorporated. And the, their task is to find the best city in which to invest and op offer an option to United States citizens to go live in a foreign country. So they have to actually go through and research three cities. Um, and I've included in your packet, there are the rubrics that we use, as well as the graphic organizer. Um, the students have to pick one of the cities they've researched, and they have to create a Google Earth tour. And in this tour, they have to write sentences describing the advantages, the disadvantages. They compare and contrast life what, the way it is now with the way it was in the past, using the different tenses in Spanish. Um, Ms. Askin is the person who has developed a Google Earth task card for the students to use. And I think right now she is going to let you guys do a little task or assignment of your own. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Good evening. Thank you You're challenging us for having us here tonight. And thank you for your support of technology. Uh, Dr. Williams, inspiring, innovative. Thank you. So, thank you. Okay. So, Google Earth. You will experience it now. Virtual passport to the world. Thank you, honey. Well, we can always learn. All right, so visualize your dream vacation spot now. Okay, school board members, where would you like to go? Shout it out. Australia. 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 <coughs> Anywhere in particular? Australia. Mm. Sydney. Oh, sorry. A city? Sydney. 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 Alice Springs. <laughs> so, the student okay. enters in the fly two box, and by the student, by the way, students love Google Earth. They'll do this during lunch. So. You enter in the fly two box and click the, you can watch up there behind you. It's up here too. Oh, is it? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, thanks. I didn't know that. Okay, and you fly. And we're having you know, just a little bit of turbulence here, but we'll, we'll arrive. 
flying to Australia. Long flight. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be careful. Are Put you enjoying? <laughs> enjoying. <laughs> okay. And we're streaming data. You can see these symbols. Um, these are layers, informational layers that provide information you can show and hide a plethora of layers that allow you to uh, heighten your experience. All right, so we are in Australia. So a couple of tips. You can click on these search results here, and these represent place marks that were constructed by the Google Earth community. You can use these navigation tools in the upper right to adjust your view. Zoom in and zoom out. Use the compass rose to go east and, and west. Any place else? To go? Yeah, let's try some place else. Let's go over to New Zealand. New Zealand. <laughs> Not far. That's exciting. <laughs> or Tasmania. <laughs> okay. Tasmania. Come on, that's some place I'd like to visit. Sorry, just a second. Tasmania. Not okay, we're flying again <coughs> to Tasmania, New Zealand. Compliments of Mrs. Meadows. This is my next trip. Oh. We can pull up How some authentic. For you. This is a perfect example of authentic learning. <laughs> <laughs> this time last year, I was in China. You were? Oh. So now we're in now we're in Australia. Once again, you can use your gorgeous nav tools to uh, refine the view, to adjust the view. Oh, gorgeous! No, look at this terrain. Wow, this is stunning. Okay, flying in, and that's a brief sample. I hope you enjoyed your trip. <laughs> Fly again with us, please. Falcon Elite, right? Falcon Elite. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Lori's going to show you um, how the students captured this virtual passport power in the classroom. Well, one thing, Miss Askin comes in and she goes through this with the students how to navigate through Google Earth. And of course, the first thing they want to do is see their house and they want to fly around and see the school. So you have to let them play with it for a little bit. And then they start working on their actual Google Earth tour. Ms. Askin, Ms. Rodriguez, and I all work together to come up with the rubrics and things that are in your packet. After the students have presented their tours to the classes, then the students have to make a decision out of all the presentations, which one they like the best and what company they should recommend to their board. And they actually send me, as president of the company, an email stating what city they've chosen and why. Um, it shows here that not only does this address the SOL objectives for Spanish, but also cross-curricular connections to English, geography, history, as well as technology. The students developed a Google Earth tour that they had to present to the board of directors. And this is an example of some student work that um, one of the exemplary examples. The place mark you see here, um, the students chose Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Um, here they meet the objective of the web quest by using the present and the imperfect tense to compare life in the past with life in the present. They actually put their sentences where the description is. They had to have um, five illustrations or five visuals and so this student has chosen a place of interest it says before it was used for defense but now it's a monument to, in, uh, to independence um, this was a place of interest that they marked 
It demonstrates a place of interest in Santo Domingo, and it can also represent an educational um, opportunity. It says there are many species, different species of animals at the National um, Zoological Park. This the students actually love because you can go to Google SketchUp and they can find actual 3D models of buildings. And this is the Alcazar de Colón. Um, this is also a place of interest. And if we were on Google Earth, you could actually zoom in, pan it out, and actually look to this from the front of it, from the sides of it, from the back of it. Um, they really got into this. I had to make sure and tell them, you know, do everything else first, then go back and play and see if you can find the 3D buildings. So some of the kids that, if they worked fast, they were able to go back and put some of these things in there. Um, this place mark is used to show a cultural opportunity. The students also compare life in the past, houses had families, with life in the present, or where the houses here are used as restaurants. Um, in the rubrics, the students had a particular number of vocab words that they had to use throughout their project, as well as examples of grammar from the chapter that we were studying. Um, this is the Fortaleza Osama. Students compare present with past using a historical place of interest. It says before it was a prison, but now it's a historical place that tourists can visit. Po population. Um, it wasn't on this one, but there was another uh, student that used this as a disadvantage, and they actually could scroll in um, and show traffic. And they actually found a traffic jam to show as one of their disadvantages. So this place mark gives a disadvantage of living in Santo Domingo. The students can only hope that the advantages already given outweigh this one disadvantage. Question?